Hello there, this is Dart Sharp, and it's been a while since I've done a commentary. Some of you probably thought I was out practicing my triple nade car bombs, but in reality, I was down with a sickness for about a week, then I have to go and figure out my old job situation, and more random life bullshit, just stuff like that's been keeping me away from doing what I love to do. But I am now finally back to where I can do, and I have some time now to go ahead and give you a commentary, and it feels like since I was dead to the YouTube universe as it was, it only makes sense that I give you guys the story of the day I was almost shot to death in real life, and I thought it would be pretty interesting to go ahead and get right into that. So, the story starts once again back in my high school when I was still going through my bastard phase and still playing a lot of sports, playing a lot of varsity level soccer and stuff like that with all of my friends from school. And to this particular day, we are coming back from a really grueling, really hard soccer practice, and uh, we all play the same sports, and we all sort of lived around the same area. Um, well, the way it worked back then is it was still pretty early in my high school career, so I didn't have a vehicle of my own yet, but like I said, we all lived about a mile apart from each other, me and two other guys, and we always hung out, and we always did stuff together, and always played the same sports, and liked the same things, so it just was sort of convenient for us all to go home together just about every single day. And I was riding home in the back of my friend's car today, and my friend, we'll just, we'll just call him Dick. That wasn't his real name, but he was kind of a dick, so I guess it makes sense that I hide his identity like that. Anyway, Dick always brought to school and uh, his dad's piece of shit 1988 Oldsmobile. This thing was a turd, but it got us from point A to B, and it was enough at that point just to get us by so we could go out on the town if we wanted to, or just to get home. Um, but I, I promise you, this thing was nothing to be proud of, it, even at that point in the time. Uh, there were some other other kids in our class who already had the really nice cars, and the rich kids already driving their Chargers, and, you know, stuff like that. But I'm not gonna not gonna complain about that. Anyway, getting back to where I was, I was riding in the back of the car, and we were taking the back roads home because we just wanted to chill out today. Like I said, it was a pretty pretty grueling practice, and we just wanted to just kind of fuck around, you know, g get back home. Um, it didn't really matter if we got back home too quickly. We just was just sort of relaxing and laughing, have a good time, listen to the radio, and you know, taking in the good stuff of life, just sort of like that. Just make the best you could in high school. That's all you can ever do. But anyway, we never really had a problem with running into anybody going down the street. It was normally a pretty much a lonely ride. Never really saw any other cars out on the road at that time, and it's not like it was in that bad of an area. It's just we didn't see anybody else driving at that time. And, but today was different because we ended up having somebody pull up behind us. And we didn't really think too much of anything of it at the time, but it was sort of a new experience, but it wasn't a, a huge deal. Until a couple minutes later, we're going down the road, seeing mile after mile, this guy's just sitting right on our ass. Just sitting on the bumper, blaring the horn, you know, just on and off, and revving the engine, just trying to intimidate us. Like, he wanted to go around, but he wouldn't, wouldn't even make a move, so we didn't really appreciate that a whole lot, as you can imagine. One of my other friends is in the car, he's sitting in the front seat, his name was Jerome, that's not his real name either, but it helps, I like to, in my stories to have that token black guy, that way I can deter racism, but anyway, Jerome decides, he says, you know what, fuck those guys, they don't really, they're not really the nice guys anyway, we don't like what they're doing, and they try to make a move to actually go around us at this point, and Jerome says, no, block them off, we don't want them to go through, so, um, Dick pulls over and blocks him off and doesn't let him through. Uh, he tries to pass again, no, moves over, blocks him off the lane again. And, uh, I look back there and they're not the happiest bunch. I see uh, these four of the biggest dudes I've ever seen sitting back there in this car and their driver, the ugliest motherfucker ever, he's got all these tattoos and all these earrings. And I don't actually know what his name was, but we'll just go ahead and call him Shithead because I don't really like the guy to this day. So anyway, got this still going, we're, we're blocking them off, they're trying to pass us angrily, we're blocking them off over time and time again because we're just we're just getting pissed off at this point right and we think it's the funniest thing ever too at the same time it's like you're doing all this stuff back miles ago and now look where you're at you're just stuck behind us we thought it was the funniest thing ever i mean seriously get on our level we play varsity soccer what are you gonna do about it and they did something about it uh, shithead gets on his gas and he he floors it up the road it goes a good quarter of a mile ahead spins the car out right in the middle of the road blocks both the lanes off so we gotta stop or like what the hell is going on there something's about to go down here obviously something serious is about to happen all of a sudden all these guys get out Shit, shithead gets out of his car and uh, all the guys get out of their doors and they're sitting there yelling at us shithead pulls a gun all right he's holding it sideways that like the kill shot like you always expect at this point it's it's turned from you know fucking around to it's pretty serious they're they're getting out they're all angry they've got guns they're pointing them at us 
So Dick throws it in reverse, spins her around, and we're off. There, and the chase begins, right? They get back in their car. They're chasing us down the road. We're going back the way we were going, all the way back to school, just on this back road, weaving in and out of these these turns and these mountains, just trying to avoid these guys. All of a sudden, they actually start shooting at us. Shithead's got his gun sitting out the window, just like you think Grand Theft Auto or something. I'm sitting in the back seat, so I can see all this happen. All these bullets are ping off, then ping, ping, ping off the back of the car, so I'm the first one to actually know about it. And it's freaking me the hell out. And I didn't really like that too much either. So, obviously, I'm starting to get a little bit freaked out here. Everyone's starting to get riled up, getting yelling. We're still trying to evade all this all this shit because it's starting to get, obviously, we're starting to get a little bit scared. We're just just high school students. We didn't know what we were getting, getting over our head with here. Right, so we're flying down the road, dodging all these bullets left and right, trying to avoid these guys. But they, they're catching up to us anyway. We come up on this left turn, so we're slowing down to take the outside of this turn. And I look back at the window, and they're right up on top of us, and they start to take the inside of the turn. They go into the other lane, and they're gonna—they're trying to pull up right up on on the side of us. And I saw that happen. I was—I like, I knew it was already over. This, this is game over. We're done. And that's the end of all of that. And I see this happen, and I'm about to piss myself. And just as they start to get up within, like right on our our gas tank distance, we're going around this corner. Here comes another car in the other lane. This car, they see them, they try to swerve, they bounce off the other car, they go off in a ditch and absolutely eat shit and roll off into the trees. At that point, it was absolute hysteria. We see, we saw this happen, we're not about to go back and help those guys, right? So, we just kick on, kicking it back into gear, going on down the road and just fly home, doing about 95 and a half miles an hour, and absolutely hysteric, you just, there, you, the feeling, there's no words to really describe how lucky we were to avoid death and just escape with our lives there. So finally we get home, we get to relax and sit down and calm down for a few hours and not even really think about what happened today. And eventually, right about 10 o'clock, Jerome gives me a call back and says, dude, turn on the news, you're not going to believe what you're going to see there. And so of course I did, and what's the first thing that I see is shithead, got his face flat on the hood of a squad car in handcuffs, right in there next to all his vagabond little gangbanger friends. They're all hooked up, they've, they're have they getting put away for possession of weapons and drugs, and trying to leave the scene of an accident. And I just, I looked and read the rest of the story and just had to have a laugh, because I knew that I was pretty much involved in all of that in one way or another, and I, I got to think about how lucky I was again to get out of all that pretty much entirely unharmed in every sense of the word. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video t today, I uh, really wanted to get that story out for you guys, so, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy the video, DS for the win, and I will see you guys later.